Hi everyone, it's me, Violet Trotsky. I am back yet again with another digital drag episode. So we've explored a lot of different looks and today I wanna to bring it home to like what I always do, my classic signature stamp mug um, and just really give you guys like the classic Violet Trotsky mug. Clean, simple, glam, sleek, and just really cutie. <laughs> So, let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by blocking my brows, covering my beard, doing some primer, and slapping on this grease paint. I think it'd be really fun to answer some questions that you guys, the viewers, have while I do my signature look. So we can just talk all about me and I can be super, super self-absorbed. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I'm about to take my little eyebrow brush and my little Elmer's glue, and I'm about to go in and cover my brows with some glue. So I always go against the grain, take my finger and kind of smooth it out. I've done this in like every video ever, so if you haven't seen this before, then you're in for a treat. And if you have, then just deal with it. Total Rucall on Twitter wants to know, what's your favorite tattoo you have and why? My favorite tattoo that I have is gonna be this one. It's probably like my most recognizable tattoo. It's the cover of a fetish magazine called Bazaar, and the illustrator is John Willie. And if you followed me on Drag Race, I did like a John Willie inspired look, and he does like really kind of pinup fetish illustrations. And this is like one of his most famous covers for this magazine Bazaar. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with some primer and prime my skin for all this makeup I'm about to put on. And my friend told me that I put primer on wrong. She was saying that you're supposed to just like, I don't even know. I feel like you can put primer on however you want. I just got this new beard color correct. It's pretty much just like coral cream stick. And I'm gonna move on to foundation. Um, I'm using my Dermablend Krylon stuff. DM and a half is the color that I use. I'm kind of like rushing it just because I'm, whenever I do this specific face, I'm always like, I feel like I'm always in a rush. So I've got it down to like a specific pace that I'm used to. So now I'm gonna take my beauty blender. I'm just gonna blend all this out, make it super seamless. For Mug's sake, wants to know what my favorite TV show is. I have watched every single episode of Forensic Files that exists. Like, I'm obsessed. Like I'm obsessed with Forensic Files. I like a series that you don't have to like really commit to. You don't have to like know the entire storyline. So you can just like, watch one episode and it's like a whole story just in like 30 minutes. That being said, the other series I really love is Sex and the City. I think I've rewatched it like four times. I don't know why, it's just so, it's like comforting to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with some contour, some cream contour. I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation in Mink. And we're gonna blend, blend, blend. <clears throat> I'm gonna do my nose, I'm gonna contour my nose. I'm gonna use one of these little baby beauty blenders to really blend, get in there and blend all of that out. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with highlighter and we're going to use Super Color TV White by Krylon. It's a good old drag classic. And I'm gonna highlight down the center of my nose with the same product. Okay, so now that all the foundation and the creams are on my face, I'm gonna blend it a little bit more and I'm gonna set it with my Kat Von D translucent setting powder. I'm just gonna cover my entire face with the setting powder. And I like to use a brush. I know some people just use another beauty blender, but something about a brush, like applying it is so old school and glamorous to me. I'm going to go in with a bit more contour, some powder contour now, just to kind of really cut everything. Uh, now I'm gonna go in with some more powder highlight, and I use Super White by Manai, and I'm just gonna use this very sparingly because I have a tendency to look a little bit ghostly, which I kind of like. I like a good porcelain look, but I'm trying to just match a little bit better, just a little. Okay, so while that bakes, I am going to answer another question. Oh my god. 
favorite episode of SpongeBob. Okay, so I'm like a huge SpongeBob fan. This is from Violet Fuck. <laughs> Zoe. I think I think I know this girl. I think I've met her before. Uh, what's my favorite SpongeBob episode? I feel like the one with SpongeBob gets or when Squidward gets really handsome, or when Squidward goes to like Squidward Land and it's like all Squidwards. I forget what it's called, but it's like a retired. It's like a community full of Squidwards and they all play clarinet and eat canned bread. I like that one a lot. Uh, I like the Krusty Krab Pizza episode because that's just like a great song and I sing it all the time. There's like so many good ones. Like I was like raised on Spongebob. Like it's like my shit. Like I'm a huge, like if I can use a Spongebob gif to like react to something, I, I use it. I don't know, there's just, what's your favorite Spongebob episode? Let me know in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna shellac my brows now that they're dry in my foundation and start on my eyes. Whew, that's a lot of highlight. I fully just put like a mountain of highlight on my face. Just gonna blend that out. Okay, now I'm gonna set everything, including my eyebrows, with translucent powder again. I'm gonna also go in with some Studio Fix by MAC in my color, which is C3, and just make sure that all the tones on my brows are kind of... Okay, now I'm gonna go in and start to draw on my eyebrows because eyebrows are the windows of the face or something. So I like to use any retractable uh, eyeliner to start with this. Uh, there's so many brow products out there, but it's really hard to get like a creamy brow line over like a glued down eyebrow because a lot of them are like really really sharp and they like will pick up the glue So I like to use a really nice creamy like glide eyeliner because um, I think it glides over all the glue really nice and They're real arch today Okay, so now that I have a like, general outline, I'm gonna go in with some liquid eyeliner and kind of really sharpen them up and make them super, super crisp. Age of Violet One wants to know what my biggest pet peeve is. I have so many pet peeves. My biggest? I can't think of like just one. Acrylic rhinestone, or acrylic gems. When drag queens use E6000 to glue on acrylic gems onto their garments biggest pet peeve by far and I would say that's like my biggest like drag no-no and I feel like that's like a crucial piece of information that no one tells you when you first start drag um, and that is like the number one basic bitch beginner mistake you could make and I hate seeing it when I see a Rue girl with acrylic gems on her outfit with E6000 eating the back of it it's over okay we have a drag race question Whovians by Blood wants to know what is your favorite challenge on your season of Drag Race and the overall show? Um, my favorite challenge on my season, I think, would be the Hello Kitty challenge, which I won. Um, I just love the ball. I love, I think the ball in general was like the best challenge on Drag Race. I also think like Drag on a Dime, like when you had to go to the thrift store and like make your outfit. Should I do a Drag on the Dime challenge on my channel? I think I should, right? I think I never got to do a drag on the dime, like thrift store drag on Drag Race. That was like season, like the early seasons would do that. I would love to go to a thrift store. I used to do that and just like create a look from like trash basically. I love that challenge. I love the ball challenge. I think those are probably my favorites. Like the really creative ones where you get to see like someone's like hands on abilities that they can do and bring to the table themselves. I feel like now, Everyone kind of has designers and there's so many people out there making costumes for drag queens and it's really easy to call some up, someone up and say like, hey, so-and-so make me an orange outfit, but it's like anyone can do that, you know what I mean? So it's really cool when you see the girls like what they can do with their physical hands and like what they truly bring to the table as far as aesthetics is concerned and or what they truly don't bring to the table as far as aesthetics is concerned because there's a lot of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna ombre my eyebrows using this really, really old Anastasia brow palette that I've had forever. So now I'm gonna go in with my TV Super White and highlight under my brow um, and really give some sort of 3D 
light and shadow illusion. Okay, so now I'm gonna blend this highlight down into my eye sh space, my eye shape space, which is pretty non-existent. Okay, question time. Kawaii Space Rock on Twitter wants to know how I chose my drag name. Um, I chose Violet after Jennifer Tilly's character in the movie Bound. She plays a lesbian. She's like just a fierce. She had like gothy. It kind of looks like kind of looks like Betty Boop, and you know Jennifer Tilly has that really like raspy, sexy, dark voice. And I think it's probably one of the like sexiest lesbian sex scenes in cinema is in this movie Bound. Um, so Gina Gershon plays her lover, and they kill Violet's husband, who's a mafia guy, and steal all this money that he stole, and they run away together. So it's super romantic and dark, and it's got drama and murder and fashion and glamour. And um, when I saw it, I was like, that's the kind of woman I want to be, like glamorous and queer and punk and chic and elegant and sexy. So like Violet, perfect, done. Um, and then tchotchke is a Yiddish word and I actually spell it, the slang spelling, um, the real spelling is T-C-H-O-T-C-H-K-E. I spell it like the way it sounds, um, which I think is supposed to be easier for people to understand and to uh, pronounce, but people still have problems with it. And a tchotchke is just like a decorative object. So if they have like, like your grandma would probably have like shelves of tchotchkes, like little figurines or like a music box or something that's like strictly for visual pleasure and has no real purpose at all. Um, I think that really ties into like my ideas about being decorative and aesthetic driven and it's almost like fetishized as like a fetish object as well. Like it's almost like the a commentary on like the objectification of women. I mean, if we really want to like get really deep into it. Um, and I kind of like to play with that concept with my drag character. Uh, so that's kind of how it all like tied together. And then it basically, it basically translates to like purple knickknack or like lavender trinket. So I'm gonna go in and start my winged eyeliner that I always do. I usually start with drawing the wing and I've been connecting it to the brow, like so. And then I do this trick that I think people, I've really hooded eyelids out of drag, like really, really hooded, and so I'm really self-conscious about that, and I have been for a long time. Um, I, mean, I guess I'm not really self-conscious about it anymore because I've kind of embraced it, especially out of drag. It kind of has like a, a really masculine, like furrowed kind of like bedroom eye look. But in drag, I really want to open my eye up as much as possible. So I do this trick where I just kind of draw the liner on the bottom um, and then I just kind of blink and it transfers to the top of the hooded lid, which is kind of like, it kind of like goes, I don't know, there's like not a lot, a lot of eye space. So like everything that I'm about to fill in black is kind of like hidden in the hood of my eye, like in the fold of skin. So I just paint all of that black and it kind of looks like just like a basic line. So if you watch what I'm about to do, um, if you have hooded eyes and you want to do drag, this is like a really good trick, I think. So I just kind of draw that, right? Just like whatever sloppy like eyeliner. And then blink like that and see it transferred all the way up there. And even from my bottom there. So I just kind of fill the entire lid like that. And then what I like to do is I go in with black eyeshadow and just kind of go over the liquid so it's all matte. Um, and that way it really kind of seals everything and there's no, cause it's basically going in the fold of my eye. Um, and so it kind of just needs that powder so it doesn't stick to each other when, it, when I open. If that makes sense. I hate talking about my eyes in like the terms of like folds and creases and shit, but that's the reality of it. Okay, and then you kind of have my hooded eye trick, cat eye, wing, what you, what you call it, what have you. What is the best and worst thing about touring? I think the best thing about touring is traveling, getting to see the world, getting to perform on like gorgeous 
theater stages, gorgeous spaces, getting to do my aerial work, um, really getting to create like an amazing performance, an amazing show and getting the proper rigging and space and lighting and equipment and gear and team and crew and, and all of it, you know? You know, a curtain and lighting and rigging and everything makes a huge difference, especially with drag since it's like such an illusion. Um, so I think that's a really amazing privilege that I get to have when I tour. I get to really have like the best stuff to really create the most amazing art. The worst thing about touring is the schedule. There's no drag union, there's no like, I mean, drag just became popular, I feel like. We're living in like the the wild west of drag, so there's no like rules. Like, if we were touring in a union show, um, the way we tour, it'd be like totally illegal. There's like no way. The schedule is so demanding and so grueling. It'll be like, the schedule will be like, land in the city, two hours to relax, get in drag, do a meet and greet, Two hour show, get out of drag, get on the bus, go to sleep, wake up the next day. Two hours to chill out, get in drag, meet and greet, show, and that'll be like five days in a row. Just like constantly like shaving, getting out of, getting in drag, doing the show, getting out of drag, sleeping on a bus. It's a nice bus, but like whatever. It's grueling. It's like a grueling, grueling schedule. And it's, I mean, it's great money. It's really great art but it like takes a toll on your body and your creativity and your soul and your spirit and everything and on that note uh i'm gonna start on my eyeshadow so i've just kind of taken um this like ash brown eyeshadow it's actually an anastasia part of the brow palette but i just use it as eyeshadow because it's let's be honest it's the same thing um so I just kind of outline my crease with this like ash brown kind of like gray shadow uh, and then I'm gonna go in and kind of blend it up uh, and then I'm gonna go in and add some glitter uh, in my lid space that I created. I'm gonna, I kind of extend it out uh, and blend it in with like the liner. Cool. So now I'm gonna go in with my foundation and this little lip brush and I'm just gonna clean up the crease and make it perfectly symmetrical as best I can and kind of clean up the line a bit. Okay, so I've got my crease as symmetrical as it's gonna get. Um, I'm gonna highlight my nose again because I want it to really be popping. Plasmic? Plasmic on Twitter wants to know how I met Casey Spooner. And it's a funny story and I'll tell you. Casey's one of my really good friends. We've only been friends for like just a little bit over a year now, but it feels like we've been friends forever. We both are from uh, Georgia, Atlanta. He's like a lot older than me, so it's like different generations. So I met him in New York at my friend Charlie Lemendu's party. And I went up to him and I was kind of fangirling because I'm a big fan of Fisher Spooner. And I performed one of his remixes of Kylie Minogue's song, Come Into My World, the Fisher Spooner remix. And it's like my favorite song to perform to, one of them. Um, so I was fangirling, I was like, hey, I'm Violet, da 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 He was kind of just like, poo-pooed me, he was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, like, didn't know who I was, wasn't, didn't give a fuck. Poo-pooed me, I was like, okay, well that kind of sucks. And, you know, I was kind of like a fan of his, whatever. And then we were in Vienna at Lifeball, and then she saw me perform and do what I do in my element. Um, and then she started giving me the time of day. So then she started talking to me, we were talking, chit-chatting, no big deal, whatever. Not really like friends yet at that point. And then we were in Milan for Men's Fashion Week and we were just casually there together and I was like, hey, I'm in Milan too, let's get together. We got together and we like basically turned Fashion Month out. Like it was like instant chemistry. We were so, we just had so much fun. I have so much fun with Casey. And the thing that I love about Casey this is like his pro and his con, is that he's like such a free spirit and really doesn't have a care in the world. Like, is not concerned with what people think of him, is not concerned with like money, is not concerned with anything. But that, that being said, like, that's what I admire most about him. And he reminds me to kind of like relax a little bit and that everything's gonna be okay and that you can just enjoy life and have fun and go through life not really caring. Um, and when I'm with him, I always kind of practice that. I always have the best time 
Um, but that being said, that's also his flaw. Um, and if you're watching this, I miss you, Casey. I love you. Cool. So now I'm going to go in using my favorite product. I use this product all the time and I'm waiting for my sponsorship because I've pimped them out so much everywhere because I love them so much. And if I ever stop making this product, I don't know what I'm going to do. But it's the Stila Diamond Dust Liquid Eyeshadow. Like, if they stop making this, like, I'm going to quit drag because it is so good. It's like my favorite product ever. Um, and I put it all over my lid that I create. Um, and it's just so good. It's just so easy. Cool. And then I always, I always like get a little bit on my eyeliner there. You can see, I just go over that with eyeliner once it dries. So it's like a perfect line. And then I'm also going to go in with this eyeliner and kind of like just do a little line around the crease just to make it really sharp. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with some black eyeshadow and just kind of blend the kind of darkest black liner that I did on my crease into the kind of gray shadow and just kind of blend them together using some black eyeshadow so it creates like a nice gradient. Um, okay, so I fully snatched my face with this gorgeous tape and I got a good lift and it's looking very severe and gorge. Um, and now I'm going to go in and do some blush and some highlighter and some under eye liner and lips and then we're pretty much done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was kind of anti-highlighter for a while, but I think I'm like really into it now. You don't want to look like you're wearing white eyeshadow, but I think having the pink, the two pinks blending together, it kind of still reads as blush. Okay, so now I'm going to go in under my eye and do like a white waterline and kind of like do my inner corner tear duct. I'm like trying to perfect the under art of under eye eyeliner. You don't want to have like a really thick liquid liner on the bottom. I don't. And I don't want to use powder because then it gets muddled and then it's the same thing. Like you want it to have a line, but you want it to be so crisp that everything still kind of is going up and you don't want any like droopiness. And I'm going to go in now and start my lips and I'm going to be using, I love these pencils. Makeup Forever is such a good brand. I like, I really love Makeup Forever actually. They sent me, um, artist color pencils and it was like a huge kit of just like every color pencil you can think of and it's like they're for anything you know what i mean that's what i like like i use lip liner as eyeliner and eyeliner like it's just like these are crayons like these are and i like the approach of thinking about makeup as just like art tools so i love this whole concept of just like here's a pencil of every color a creamy pencil you can use it however you want um and there's no rules and i think that's that's what I like. It just is like a universal pencil. So I'm using it on my lips and I'm using the color Universal Earth. Okay, so now I'm gonna fill it in and I love, again, I'm gonna plug Stila because I do love their products. Um, I love this Stay All Day liquid lipstick. It's matte, but it's not like dry. Like I hate a lot of liquid lipsticks I've used will just dry up and it start to crack and your lips are dry and it's just like a big mess. My signature beauty mark. Um, okay, I'm gonna put some lashes on. I like a really piecey lash because I want you to be able to see through the lashes and see the crease and see all the work that I just did on my eye. All right, lashes are on. I'm about to throw it with some mascara. I like to use the MAC Haute and Naughty Lash. All right, I am lashed and doe-eyed and gorgeous, and it's time to throw on a wig and give you guys the full fantasy. And there you have it. I am fully wigged, lashed, corseted, and doe-eyed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of my signature stamp mug. And I also hope you enjoyed me answering a few of your questions. And if you want me to do another video answering questions similar to this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and also, if you want to stay up to on everything that I'm doing, make sure you subscribe and comment and all of the goodness. Love you so much. Mwah.